Hi, welcome to my first unboxing video. First, let's go over a little context. Annie Kubik uh, sent me this uh, DIY color resin kit for free. Um, they're not sponsoring me so I can say whatever I want, but they did want me to, you know, just try it out and then print the stuff and then tell them like what values that I used. And let me tell you, I am the worst person to send something like this to because I'm colorblind. Not that colorblind, uh, just enough to fail those like color dot circle number tests. You know what I'm talking about, right? And I don't usually do unboxing videos, but there was like no information on this product. So I felt like I had like a responsibility to put it out there, you know? So if you like unboxing videos, do not subscribe to me because this might be my first and last one. But if you like blender tutorials on how I make cute miniatures like these, then you can subscribe to me. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get started. So here is the box. And the first thing you'll notice is this color chart thing. There's two sides to it. One's in Chinese, one's in English. And then you'll see six kilograms of resin. Um, from the box, you won't know what they are. So you'll have to open them to find out. And then there's this box. In this box, there's a bunch of accessories like a measuring cup. There's four pairs of gloves and four plastic cups, which I ended up not using. And then there's little droppers. And the best thing, in my opinion, is the kitchen scale. And then let's open up the boxes to see what colors we get. Here we have clear magenta. Here's clear yellow, a clear cyan, a ball of transparent, a bottle of white, and a bottle of black. So this is what you get, and I think for the price that you pay, it's a pretty good value. Um, please note that due to over, you know, seas shipping, there's no batteries, but luckily I had these rechargeable AAA batteries, which I stuck, stuck in there and powered on the scale. And to make sure that it works, I put this, I zeroed it. Um, it's that T button right there that zeroes it. Um, but originally I put, I kept this plastic like cover on there. So make sure you take that off before you start. I have some pumpkin people that I want to print. So I'm going to print it in this orange, but note that in this color wheel, there is no mention of black and no transparent. Okay. Here we are on, um, any cubic slicer and we are going to print these three, uh, pumpkin people. There's a pumpkin, witch, a pumpkin lumberjack and a pumpkin night uh, and we are going to print this in the 6ks because um, the vat for the pro the m7 pro is a little i've never actually like changed it out um, but i have a few um, different vats for the 6ks so it'll, it'll just be easier to you know quickly change out that one okay so here we will just slice it um I don't really know the the profile, so I'm just gonna go with default resin and you know, usually that works for me. Okay, so here it says it's gonna take 35 milliliters about, um, and then it's gonna take three hours and 40 minutes. So significantly longer than the M7 Pro, but it's fine, we have time. So here are the ratios and we're gonna start with yellow, which is the biggest one. Make sure you shake it up really well. And I started with the dropper and I figured out that it's gonna take forever doing that. So I take the whole bottle and I start pouring. And we're gonna make, we're gonna make this easy and make it go to a hundred. Here I went a little over. So I'm taking the dropper and I'm sucking out the excess until we get to about 67 grams of the yellow. And then I actually ended up uh, dropping the dropper into the bottle. So I had to get tweezers to uh, pull it out. Um, and then I'm just setting that aside while I clean up the bottle and because we're done with the yellow for now. And then because I didn't want to waste it, I just put whatever the rest of the yellow was in there into the measuring cup. 
Next is the white. And we need to be careful because if we pour excess in, we can't really suck anything back out because it is now a mixture of two colors, right? Um, so do your best to get a little bit under and then pour a little bit in until you get to the target number. And 97 is what we're looking for. Next is the magenta. And because we only need 3% of this, we are just going to use the dropper until we get to 100. I do go over 100 a little bit because I felt we might lose some when we pour it into the resin vat. So I went to 100.3. And then I'm using a plastic scraper to mix it, but uh, I figure it's probably not the best thing to use. Um, in my mind, like a plastic spoon would have probably been better. I have these Ziploc bags because I don't want to waste these droppers and just use them one time and then throw them in the garbage. So I'm going to save them, but because they have resin in them, they can't be exposed to any like UV light. So I have this extra filament box that doesn't have a hole in it and I just throw it in there ready to use for next time. Here is my resin vat and we are just going to pour in our mixture which is kind of satisfying. Like I am colorblind, but this looks pretty orange to me. So I was very happy with the result. And as you can see, it doesn't like fill in the whole vat, um, but we are trusting the math on this one. And because like the build plate will squish it down, hopefully it'll be more, it, it should be more than twice the amount that we need, right? So. I have my 6KS in this enclosure and we are just putting everything on it to make sure it is good and ready. And then we're going to put in our we're going to put in our slicer profile and then click print. We're going to put the lid back on and we are ready to clean up. So I'm just going to take these paper towels and then wipe off all the resin. This is usually how you clean the vat as well. Um, you do not want to get any of this resin on your skin. So make sure you are wearing gloves and you do not want to pour this resin down the drain. So that is why I am just using the paper towel to wipe it up. And then here I am using the paper towel that I lined uh, my lunch tray with and we're just wiping off the lunch tray and then we're giving the measuring cup one final wipe to just make sure we get all the excess resin. And then here I am placing the droppers and the scale and I figure I could fit all of this into my filament box so I am just packing everything up the nice and neat. And then we are just sticking it into that box so that we can have everything in one place ready to use for next time. Making sure everything fits perfectly. And if you're like me, I, I'm just going to leave all of this stuff on this lunch tray because I have the space for it. And we are just going to save it here on the shelf for next time. Once your print is done, you can uh, take it off your 3D printer. And then here I have a separate lunch tray. Um, lunch trays are very useful for 3D printing, okay? And then I'm just taking this metal scraper and we are carefully scraping it off the build plate. And what I usually do is I just wipe the build plate um, so that it's ready for use again. And then I just stick it back on to my 3D printer. And then making sure we have the resin off of our scraper. We are putting our minis into the basket and then we are getting it ready for the alcohol bath. Here I have my Anycubic wash and cure station, which is very handy. And we are making sure it's on the wash mode and we are letting it wash. And while that washes, we're doing the same thing. We're wiping this one down for any resin and then putting a new liner of paper towel. 
So this is how the minis turned out, and I think they look pretty good. Um, we are just carefully removing the supports, so um, you know they come off pretty nice. Making sure we don't like break some of the thinner parts, like the handles of the axe or the the scepter on the witch. And with the with the knight, we're being a little more careful because you know it has a lot more parts and it's a bigger piece. So, but we end up getting it off of there and they look pretty good. So here I have these plastic uh, FDM printed bases and I'm just putting you know super glue on them and making sure they're ready for to be cured. And then back to the washing cure station. We are just curing them for two minutes is what I usually do. And to me, that's usually good enough. So here are the final pictures of what they look like. And I think they look pretty good. Uh, please let me know what you think, but to my colorblind eyes, uh, the word vibrant comes to mind. Um, so I think mission accomplished, Anycubic, good job. And because it doesn't specify what kind of resin this is, like um, ABS-like or anything, we are gonna perform some drop tests. So we are doing three separate heights, 10 inches, 20 inches, and 30 inches. And all of them around 20 inches was fine, but then the 30 was what gave all of them trouble. But all in all, I think this resin gets a pass from me because even though some pieces are breaking off at 30 inches, um, you usually wouldn't be dropping these from that height onto a hard surface like this, right? If you do drop it, um, it should be like onto some carpet or something or just on your table, but not from like that great of a height unless you're just throwing these up in the air, right? And I did manage to put these two back together, but the scythe on the knight was a, was a little too thin. So I just cut off the rest of the scythe and I just have him as like a unarmed pumpkin rider. So he's still not like a waste of a figure. Okay, so what do I think about this product? Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. When they first contacted me about how they wanted to send me this DIY resin kit, I was like, no one wants this and no one needs this. Because if you want a resin in a specific color, you can just buy it in that color probably. And if you're like me, you print miniatures, you're gonna paint them anyway, so it doesn't matter what color's underneath, right? But I will say it like gives you kind of a sense of accomplishment when you're like mixing all the little colors together. And um, it made me feel like I was in like a chemistry class and I wasn't completely failing. So yeah, I would say this would be something kind of fun for you to do with your kids if you're, you know, try to come up with like a specific color that doesn't exist or you know you can't find the resin or the paint in the color that you exactly want um, but you do need to take the proper precautions especially with kids or pets make sure you know they don't touch the resin on on their skin make sure you're always wearing gloves maybe wear masks work with it in a very well ventilated area and make sure you clean up properly too. Do not pour it down the drain, just clean it with paper towel as best as you can and then throw away that paper towel and then lock that bag up, okay? So make sure no one's touching it, no one's getting anywhere near it, okay? So would I recommend this? Um, I would say yes. Um, for the price, uh, right now on their site, it's $118 and that's six kilograms of resin that you get. So that's a little under $20 per kilogram. And I think that's usually a pretty good price for uh, resin. And on top of that, if you order the six color like set, you do get the extras of, you know, you get four gloves, four cups, which I didn't need or use. And you get the measuring cup, which you do need. But the, the best thing about it is you get that tiny scale which, you know, could be useful for measuring resin or it could be useful in the kitchen as well. But yeah, I'm genuinely curious. Like, is this something you would buy? Uh, let me know in the comments. 
uh, if you think you would buy this and what kind of colors you would come up with. And let me know the values and maybe I'll try it out and then you can see it in a future video or something. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.